Good morning, everyone. We thank you for joining us here this morning at Rock Faith International Ministries, where we are removing walls of separation to serve. We give God honor and praise on today. And we are so thankful for this Thanksgiving season. As we say, this is the time that man has put on the calendar. But we know as the people of God that every day is a day of Thanksgiving. The people of God recognize and understand that no matter where we are in life, it's a time to give thanks. The word of God says to us, in all things, give thanks. But this is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. And so we thank God for that on today. We thank God today for our pastor, uh, Pastor Gooley Hoggart, who is the senior pastor here at Rock Faith. And I serve with him as co-pastor here. And we ask that you will always keep us lifted in your prayers as we prepare to do the work of ministry. We need God as we do this thing. We need God with us and we need your prayers. If you will go with me to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you this morning. Thank you for blessing us to come together this morning on, oh God, this session. We thank you this morning for the people of God that have gathered. Oh God, we thank you this morning for those who are on the conference lines and those who are in this session this morning. We just want to give you praise and honor today. We worship you and we adore you. Why? Because you are worthy to be praised. And Lord, we pray today that your word will go forth and that it will accomplish the thing that it is sent forth to do, that it will touch the hearts of the people today and that some soul might come running to you saying, what must I do to be saved? How can I get this God, this great savior in my heart? God, oh God, let your word go forth. Oh God, I decrease, oh God, that you increase. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, I say thank you and amen. Hallelujah. As we get ready to go forward, we thank God today for our Bible decree. Uh, here at Rock Faith, we like to give our decree about what the Word of God means to us. And it says that this is my Bible. Praise God. It is the Word of God. And in it is eternal life. Because God's word is my guide, I will not add to it nor take away. This is the word of God, and we thank God for it on today. As we prepare this morning, I just want to thank God for all of you who continue to support us here at Rock Faith. I know that um, we always have God on our side, but we also need some people who we know that are supporting us and uh, encouraging us along the way. The Bible says to us that iron sharpens iron. So we need somebody that's going to be there with us to sharpen us. We are to be encouragers one uh, to the other. And no matter what church we are in or what body uh, that we are sitting in on today, as the body of baptized believers, we know that we need the Lord on our side and we need the people of God to support us. We are to bear the burdens of one another and we are to be there for one another. So we thank God for it on this morning as we prepare now to go forth in the word of God in our service and our honor to God. We need to be deliberate in taking time out to pray, to worship and meditate on God's word and to listen to God in the spirit. Many of us may say that this comes naturally to us. You know, many of us may say, well, I, it's, it's, a, it's a common habit for me to pray. It's a common habit for me to have devotion. But I will be honest with you today that this does not come completely natural to me. You know, because the enemy, there's always a tug. There's always a pull where the enemy comes in and he tries to pull us away from the things that God would want us to do. We got to remember that we are still in this body, in this flesh, and in it dwells no good thing. And the, the devil would love nothing more than to separate us and to pull us away. But we have to do like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, when he says to us, I keep under my body and bring it unto, into subjection, least that at any means, when I have preached to others, 
I myself should become a castaway. You see, the adversary, the devil, would love nothing more than to make us think that after we have accepted Jesus Christ into our lives, that we can sit back on our beds of ivory and ease and do nothing else. But to the contrary, there is work that we have to continue to do in the faith. Now, we don't work to be saved because there's nothing we could ever do to be saved to merit God's grace and his mercy. But after God has touched our lives and saved us and brought us into the arena of the family of God, we want to be found working. We want to be found doing. Doing what? Doing the work of God. You know, many people say, well, it don't take all of that. And you don't have to be doing all of that and people just doing this. But I take, declare unto you today, it takes that and more. And you know, once we have come into this vein of knowing who Christ is, our heart should want to do more. Our heart should want to say, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? But we need to have uh, be led by the spirit of God and know that whatever we do, we have to learn in this Christian walk that we need to be deliberate in our doing for the Lord. Uh, and this means that we will need to cut out some of the things in our life that are not quality things that's, that's uh, conducive to our Christian living. And then we need to incorporate those things that are. So in order to do that, we must be deliberate people in serving God. So come along with me today as we see what the word of God has to say about serving God intentionally. That is my subject today, serving God intentionally. Now the definition of the word intentionally, and y'all probably say, well, why does she always give a definition? Like we don't know the definition of words. I don't want to, you to think that. I just want us to be on the same uh, plane, the same level of where we are. So the definition today of the word intentionally is deliberately and on purpose. That's what the word, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the definition of the word intentionally is. And then the word of the definition of the word purpose is, is the reason of which something is done or created or for which something exists. So our lesson text today comes out of Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 12. Because in, in, in reading these this scripture today, we want to see why do we need to do and serve God intentionally? Why? Why do we need to serve him on purpose? Why do we need to have the intent in our mind to serve God intentionally, intentionally and on purpose? So the lesson text today, if you have your Bible, if you will join with me in reading it, I like to always encourage people to read the Bible for themselves to read what the word of God says uh, so that you will know uh, what I'm reading. It's not Janice's words again. It is the word of God. So in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou settest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes and thou shalt write upon the, uh, the post them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord th thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not and houses full of good things which thou fillest not and wells digged which thou diggest not and vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not when thou have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, 
which brought thee out forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. See, in this passage of scripture today, Moses is giving the word of God. He's setting the, the expectations that the Lord our God is giving to the children of Israel. And he's letting them know before they go over into Canaan land, he was preparing them to let them know, first of all, he said to them, fear the Lord. This fear that he's talking about here is a respect and an honor that we hold him in reference, that we honor him as our God. And then he says to them that they are to keep his commandments. See, this is noteworthy here where he says to them to keep his commandments and to not uh uh, to also be in fear and reverence of him. Now, this fear here is not a fear that they are scared of God, but it is an area of respect that he's saying, you've got to honor God and you've got to have a respect for him. And, you know, I want to stop right here and just say this because many people say, well, why do we have to do that? Think about it. In your own homes, why do we teach our children to respect us as parents. Why do you want them not to stand in the fear of you, but you want them to, to respect you as mom and dad in the house? And, and you want them to do that because if they don't respect you, then they're not gonna take at heart what you teach them. And so when you teach them that area of respect, then when they're in your presence, you're letting them know you can't say and do anything in front of me. And many times when we teach our children like that, even when they're not in our presence, they'll begin to think about what you taught them as the parents. They'll begin to remember. I remember what mama and dad told me. And so it's noteworthy here that God was teaching the children of Israel through Moses that they had to fear God and they had to love him and respect him as God. You see, our mindset of how we view God will either cause us to live our lives intentionally for him or it will cause us to live our lives as we please. See, when we, when we don't live our lives as we please, when we have an intent to serve God. So I want to talk to us today about several areas in which we should focus on in serving God intentionally. Serving God intentionally. And we remember that the word intentionally means deliberate and on purpose. That we got a purpose in mind as to why we are doing this. There's always a purpose in mind. So the first area, I got some topics here and I'm going to try not to stay on them all day. But they are some good areas for us to learn how to serve God intentionally. The first area is our walk with God. Matthew 6 and 33, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. It says in this foundation, uh, if our foundation is a weak foundation, if we have not built it upon our faith in God, see that will be a weak foundation and anything else that we put on that foundation that is weak, trust me. It will, it, will, it will crumble. So sometimes we lay foundations and we try to build things on them. We try to build relationships with our families. We try to build a good career. We try to build uh, good uh, marital relationships. We try to build a good relationship with our children. But trust me, if your foundation is not set upon Christ, the solid rock, all of those things, when you think you're building them up, they're going to crumble. Why? Because they're not on a solid foundation, which is the word of God. So we have to build our foundation on Christ. And how do we do that? We walk and live and build intentionally. And how do we do that? We have to make sure that we're having some prayer time. We have to make sure that we're having some devotion time. You see, our faith, which is our relationship with God, that is what provides us the sure foundation. See, many of us didn't think about that. Our faith is the foundation. If our faith is not built on Christ Jesus, 
then we got a shaky foundation. And anything else that we try to build on, you know, many people think that their money is going to get them somewhere. But money fails. Many people think that their clout and their networking is going to get them through life. But if we don't have our foundation built up on Christ Jesus, we are fighting a losing battle here. And that is imperative that we realize that. All other ground is, is sinking sand. Y'all remember when we talked about the man who built the house on sand and the man who built the house on a rock? The man who built the house on the sand, when the storms came, it couldn't stand. But the man who built the house on the rock, when the storms of life came, and trust me, trust me, those storms are going to come. Many times we don't think storms are, are, we're exempt from them, but we're not exempt from the storms of life, y'all. I don't care whether you're saved or whether you're not saved. There are going to be storms that come against us. And if you are not walking and have built your walk life up with Christ to be a sure foundation, it's going to fail. It's going to crumble. And so it's important that we have a, a walk with God. And we need to get to know God and to serve him. It doesn't happen overnight, but it can happen. And how does it happen? When we become deliberate, when we become intentional in building our life on our faith in God, that we can stand the test of times, the storms of life that come against us. We need to learn how to spend time with God on purpose. Have an intention in mind that we have carved out some time that we specifically have dedicated this time for the Lord. That's how we build our house. That's how we build our walk and our relationship with him. Shame on us because, you know, many times if we would even compare where we are in this, this, this time, many marriages fail because they have not built a, 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 a sure foundation. Many marriages fail because they don't have a relationship that is built on solidity. It's not built on firmness. The only way it can last. Now, many people say, well, I've been married 80 years and we ain't never been saved. Then you're just, you're just living. You're not living on a firm foundation. At any given time, it could crumble. So I want to encourage us today to live, a, a serve God intentionally. We have to have a life that is built upon living for God. And then next, B, I want to talk about our time. We have to build our time up intentionally that's dedicated to God. Ephesians 5 and 15 through 17, it says, See then that ye walk circumspectively. And this word circumspectively means that we have a careful uh, consideration of where we are, the times that we are living in. Not as fools, but as wise. 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. God wants us to be people of wisdom, recognizing and understanding the times that we are living in. He wants us to recognize that time and life is really short. And we have to redeem the time and make sure that we are making the most of the time that God gives us. Don't waste the time away. Don't waste it away. Psalms 90 and 10 through 12. And many of us in this age bracket that we are in, we can relate to this scripture. It says the days of our years are three score years and 10. And if by reason of strength, they are four score years. Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. The twelfth verse, so teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You know, since we know that the time is short, we need to learn how to live time conscious on intention, meaning we don't need to be a person who says, oh, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow we might die. We don't need, I'm not talking about that kind of worration, but we need to be people of wisdom to know many of us are already in this three score or four score time frame in our lives. 
So we don't need to be foolish people. There are many people who have died in their younger years. But if God has allowed us to see the times of 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 100, then we need to be wise. We need to redeem the time and realize that we need to live on intention, serving God. Because common sense should tell us, but the wisdom of God tells us that our time is getting closer and closer. We got fewer days. We got more. Most of our time is probably behind us. So we need to use the time that we have left wisely since we know this. Not that we are worrying every second about time, but that you understand, as Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. Is that not what he told uh, uh, Mary when they were looking for him, his mother, when they came looking for him? Why did you run off, Jesus? He told him, he said, I must be about my father's business. See, all of us are on assignment here. And I don't know about you. But I realize and recognize that the times and the days are winding up. And I want to be about my father's business. So because I do, I want to realize that the time that I have, I want to live it on intention. I want to deliberately give it back to God. Why? Because I understand the time that I am in. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, it says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. That means that time, it, uh, there's a time to live and there's a time to die. There's a time to reap and there's a time to sow. That's what the writer went on to say to us. In these times and seasons, there is a lot of, th of times. It's a time to love and a time to hate. He went on to tell us all the categories of the seasons of life. But I want us to recognize today the time that we are in. It's time for us to know the time and the season that we are currently in and to use that time wisely. You know, I reminded years ago, there was a song we used to say that all that's left is time to live for Jesus. And it went a little like this. It says, all that's left is time to live for Jesus. No more time to walk in our own way all that's left is time to live for jesus so won't you give your life to him today you see time is short and it's winding up so we need to learn how to live our lives in serving god intentionally, deliberately, on purpose, on assignment. The next thing is how we can serve God intentionally is in our relationships. Hebrews 10, 23 through 25 says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Ain't no time to be wavering, y'all. The, the word of God says, you know, it's too late in the day for me to change this gospel. Ain't no time to be wavering in our thinking and in our minds, but we've got to stay the course. He says, for he is faithful that promised. The 24th verse, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. In our relationships, it's time for us to live on intention. We need to make sure that we stay in the fellowship around the saints, building us up in our most holy faith. See, we need, this is not a time to separate ourselves, but in our relationships, we need to stay wholesome and come together and stop separating as the devil would warn us to do, but get together and have a wholesome body of Christ relationship. Live on intention. Stop saying, I don't want to be around the people of God. That's who we need to be around. I'm talking about the real people of God here today. Live life on intention, living for God. 
We need to make sure that we stay in the fellowship. First, second Corinthians six and 14. It says to us, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have unrighteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? You see, God wants us to have wholesome relationships. Those that bring glory to him. Not those that bring dishonor to him. In order to have relationships that are not yoked with the world, we have to be intentional on watching who we are connected with. Some of us, as I was telling our ladies yesterday, some of us are connected with some people that God is telling us they ain't supposed to be in your circle. They don't belong connected to you because of where I'm taking you. God is saying to us, disconnect. You're unequally yoked. You see, in the farming years, you didn't put a, a, a bull and a mule together because that would make them unequally yoked. One is stronger than the other. And by them being yoked together, the stronger is going to pull the weaker. And so we don't want to be yoked up with people in our life that's going to be pulling us away from God. We want to have our relationships intentionally built up where we can draw into God. And those people that are with us, if they're not coming with you, cut them loose. Let them go. Let them go. Why? Because you are living a life on intention. You are living a life on intentionality for the Lord. And because you realize that, you know that these people, they can't fit where God is taking you to go. So your relationship, Live it on intention. Matthew 28 and 19. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is the great commission that Jesus left with his disciples and he left it with us. That we've got to be intentional about going out to reach souls. This is a part of our relationship, our walk with God, that we are on assignment. We have to live our life intentionally for God. We are purposefully on assignment for the master. And I don't know about you, but my focus, hallelujah, is on God. My intent is to bring a soul with me when I come to heaven. I don't want to go by myself, but I want to bring some other folk along with me. The ones that the devil tried to snatch out and pull him into a devil's hell. I say to them today, I want you to come along with me. Come along with me as I journey to heaven. So today, our lives should be lived on, on intention with our relationships. And then our households. In just, just um, Joshua, the devil trying to tongue tie me here, but he's a liar and the father of it. Joshua 24 and 15, it says, and if it seemed good, evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side, praise God, of the flood or the gods um, of the Amorites or in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, we got to say in our households today, we got to live on intention. We have to make an intentional stand in our homes today. I'm talking about serving God intentionally. We have to make a stand in our homes today, regardless of what others do. Many of us say, well, I can't make that decision for other people in my household. Yeah, you can't change another person's mind. But by you making a stand, you never know whose life you're going to impact. Even in your own home, many times we don't even try to make a declaration. We don't even try to make a stand for God. Why? Because we get weak. We get, well, I don't know what other people might do, but I'm just going to do what I'm supposed to do. No, you should want other people to come along with you. Make a stand. Make a declaration that for God I live and for God I die. Thinking that uh, we, we might be the bad guy. 
Don't always think you're going to be the bad guy. Don't, 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 don't back up because you don't want to be the one that said, uh, I'm going to live for Christ. But make a stand in your home. Because if we don't, we know what the saying that says, if you don't stand for something, and in this case, we're talking about standing for God. If you don't stand for something, then you will fall for anything. And some of us, we wonder why all these things keep happening in our life. Because we haven't made a stand. We haven't made a declaration to say, for God I live and for God I die. We haven't put a stamp in the sand to say, this is it, devil. Not having you in my life no more. I'm not having you in my home no more. But I've made a stand and a declaration. And I'm living intentionally and on purpose for God in our households. And then lastly, I know y'all don't want me to talk about this because I believe I talked about this one the last time I spoke. But it's about living intentionally about our money, how we spend our money. I know that's not a favorable topic, but you know what? It's all in there. Like Prego, it's in there. You can't eat the tomato without eating the onions and the green peppers and the tomato sauce because it's all in there. So the money part is all in there. So living intentional about serving God the way we give. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase so that thy barns will be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Hallelujah. Don't you want to be a person who gives intentionally? Not that one that's like pulling a tooth. Come on, come on, let me get that tooth out of here. No, not like that. But don't you want to be that person who comes? Not that person who gives grudgingly. And every time you turn around, you say, well, Lord, let me go on and give again because they just going to keep on talking about it. You don't want to be that person, but you want to be that person who gives because you are a person that's intentfully given, deliberately given, on assignment given because you know that this is a part of who you are in Christ. Don't be that person who's pulling back, but be that person who's pulling in. Praise God. But we want uh, to be those givers that love to give. And in doing so, we are doing it intentionally because we know that God intentionally gave to us. And how did God intentionally give to us? He gave his son, Jesus. He gave him deliberately, intentionally, on assignment, on purpose. For who? For you, for me, for us, on purpose. He intentionally did all of this for us. So today, we need to learn how to give on intention, with intention. Second, uh, Second Timothy 6 and 17, it says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. The 18th verse, it says that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Learn how to keep a humble mindset when God blesses you. Don't get that mind, that proud mindset that I got this now and hey, look at them. They don't have. But keep a humble mindset and allow, the God, allow God to always use you, that he will use you intentionally. Be intentional in giving love and kindness to others. Remember, when being intentional, we are deliberately carving out time to be a blessing to someone else. See, I love that because we're carving out time to say, I'm going to help the homeless today. I'm going to give to my brother or sister. We're carving out time. And even in our monies, when we're giving, carve out a piece of your money to say, I want to sow this part of my giving into the lives of somebody. Don't be a hoarder, as we talked about before. That's, for, that's a wasteful mindset. Be a person who gives. Be a person who loves to give. And I declare unto you, when you do that, you'll begin to see doors open for you. You'll begin to see ways made for you that you had not even dreamed about. 
Praise God. Acts 20 and 35 said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So these areas that I want us to focus on today, I had to rush through them, but I declare to you, I could have spent an hour on each one of them. Trust me. But I know that we needed to hear today about living and serving God intentionally in our walk with God, in our time for God, in our relationships with God and with others, in our household, making a declaration and a stand for those in our household, and also in our finances, in our money that we give. Now, these were some very good topics, I believe, because they, had, they really touched my heart. And so today I pray that they have touched you. And I pray today, as so I prepare to close, that this message and this word will sink deep in your heart, that you will walk away saying, I want to live for God intentionally. I want to be that person who, who has uh, carved out some of the day to serve God. And I want to say this to us today. Don't just give God any old time. You know, when you get up in the morning, that is really the best time to give God. That is called the first fruit of giving. Not after you have been there. Some people say, well, I just wait to the end of the day. But what about preparing your day in the forefront? You know, after you've run all day and you've been in the hustle and bustle, at, the, at night you're tired. So you're giving God some sleep time. You're going to be slumped over sleep. You're going to be going to bed soon, but give God of the first part intentionally. That's what intent does. It says, Lord, I want to start the day off with giving it back to you. A portion of this day, God, I dedicate it to you. I love that because I think about it carving out and that just stays in my mind, carving out time that's dedicated specifically to God and for the purpose of living on purpose and intent. Today, if you do not know God, Jesus Christ is your personal savior. I pray that you will know this great savior. In Romans 10 and 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Today, I encourage you and I invite you to come along in this uh, body of Christ today and join us as we go in this Christian walk. If you don't know God today, Jesus as your personal savior, I invite you to come and be a part of the family of God. If you are in a backslidden state, I encourage you to come back to the Lord. He's been standing there with arms open wide, just like he did for the prodigal son, the father was there with open arms. It was all about the father. See, in the prodigal son, we thought that that was all about the son. But it was about the father who is a forgiving father who's been waiting for us with arms stretched wide saying, come back home, my child. Wherever we are today in life, we might have backslidden from prayer, from devotion, from giving, from family relationships. We might have backslidden in any of these areas, but God is saying to us, you can come back because I've been waiting for you. I love that right there. He says, I've been waiting for you. I love it. I've been waiting for you. Hallelujah. God has been waiting for us and we thank God for it today. And if you need a refreshing of the Holy Spirit today, if you need a refilling of his spirit, we're going to pray. We're going to pray today, right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word today. Your word that has gone forth, it has touched the lives of many. I do believe, oh Lord, because your word says it will not, it will not go out void, but it will accomplish the thing which you've sent it forth to do. And so we thank you for it today. I ask today, dear God, that that soul that needs salvation, that you will save by your power. Oh God, oh God, touch the heart today that people will come crying, what must I do to be saved? Oh God, help them to yield their vessel to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. That one in the backslidden state today, we pray, oh God, that they will come back to you, knowing that they have a father that's waiting with arms open wide to come back and to receive with love. And those today, oh God, who need a refreshing and a refilling of your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, grant us the power today 
the anointing, oh God, today. In your spirit, we pray. And we thank you for it today. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank God for you today. As we prepare to close at this session, we invite you to reach out to us through our Facebook, through our uh, website at um, rockfaithimi.org. You can go out there and see all of our information, our contact information. There's a place that you can leave prayer requests uh, and you can reach out to Pastor G or myself via phone. We encourage you today. If you are in a place that you feel like this is the end of the rope for you, don't allow the enemy to take you under. Please know that there are people here ready and waiting to help you to get through those tough spots that you are in. God has people that are concerned about you. And here at Rock Faith, we are concerned about you. So today I pray that you will know that you're not in the struggle alone, that you have someone. But most of all, you have God on your side. So until the next time, you be blessed. God speed with you. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for it. Sister Rolena, I will turn this back into your hands. Amen, Pastor Jay. Thank you for that awesome word.